All right. So we want to uh, talk about a, a famous theorem due to Paul Erdős and George Sekeres. I mentioned Erdős uh, in our last lecture when I told you that I met him when I was uh, just a little bit older than most of you. Uh, he passed in 1996, and on the right is George Sekeres, who actually uh, outlived him uh, by a bit. Uh, I, I knew Erdős quite well. Uh, I, I met Sekeres uh, when I was young, but I, I didn't really, um, wasn't around him quite that much. Uh, here's a picture of me with Erdős that was taken, I think it's 1988. Uh, I was a chair of the Department of Mathematics at Arizona State University at the time, and Erdős was visiting me. Uh, I, I know you won't believe this, but I actually have on a shirt and a tie, and I have no beard. I, I have to, it was in my clean-shaven days. I think I grew the beard soon after that and have, have never taken it off again. Uh, I have many, many pictures of with Erdős. You know the... Uh, the story about Kevin Bacon and the seven degrees of freedom or something like that? Well, in mathematics, uh, there's a concept called the Erdős number. So Paul Erdős has Erdős number zero. And if you've written a joint paper with Erdős, you have Erdős number one. And if you haven't written a paper with Erdős, but you've written a paper with somebody who wrote a paper with Erdős, then you have an Erdős number of two etc., etc., etc. And the uh, story is that anybody who has a finite Erdős number has an Erdős number of at most seven. And uh, the, the number of people that have Erdős numbers is huge because Erdős wrote in his lifetime more than 1,500 research papers. In fact, he wrote the last 200 after he was gone. Now, that's hard to do. Uh, which means, of course, he had work underway with people, and they published it posthumously. Uh, I have an Erdős number of one. Uh, and it turns out that the number of people who have Erdős number of one is actually going down pretty steadily because they're getting old and dying. That's, that's kind of sad. I was at a memorial conference uh, a, a year ago, and uh, it was the 20th anniversary of, of his death. And I was uh, telling some stories uh, about experiences with Erdős, and there are many. You should, you, if you want to have a, a little bit of fun, go on Wikipedia or look up some of these uh, stories. They, they, they did uh, things on NPR, and there are films about him and so forth. He's a quite, quite a fascinating character and many, many stories. Uh, and so I was telling a couple of these in the audience, and I noticed they're glazing over. They're, they're not getting it. And then I realized that uh, they weren't born when Erdős died. You know, so uh, things, things are, are changing. Uh, anyway, so wonderful memories that I have of uh, time and events with, with Paul Erdős. All right, so what is this theorem? The theorem and by the way, it's fantastic in mathematics how you're this wonderful genius uh, like Erdős was. And... And what does history remember? I mean, there are many, 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 many theorems in, that are due to Paul Erdős. He, again, 1,500 papers, there's got to be a lot of theorems. In. But here's this little elementary thing that, uh, that has Erdős's name with George Sekeres attached to it. So this, the theorem is that if you have a sequence of mn plus 1 distinct real numbers, then inside that sequence, you can either find an increasing subsequence of length m plus 1 or a decreasing subsequence of length n plus 1. All right, so now I'm going to give you an example. Uh, here, m is 3 and n is 5, so 3 times 5 plus 1 is, is uh, 16. Hopefully, those are 16 distinct numbers. I've made a couple of typos in here, so uh, it could be that I don't have 16 numbers, and it could be that they're not all distinct. Uh, but let's, let's see. Look at this sequence and see what's the longest increasing 
subsequence and what's the longest increasing, uh, decreasing subsequence. Now, by subsequence, I don't mean they have to occur consecutively. So increasing can be here and then here, then over there. So you don't have to be consecutive. But what's the longest increasing subsequence you can find? I can start 2, 3, pi. Pi is bigger than 3. I just threw that one in to remind you this doesn't have to be integers. 2, 3, pi, 7, 8, 10. That's pretty good. Can you find one that's even longer than that? All right, what about decreasing? Uh, 2, 0, minus 3, minus 6, minus 8. Do you see that one? I mean, maybe you can get more. Maybe you can get longer. So is, it clear, is it clear what the notion of an increasing subsequence is and what a decreasing subsequence is? So the theorem is, if I give you 16 numbers, you've got to always be able to find an increasing subsequence of length 4 or a decreasing subsequence of length 6. 4 is 3 plus 1, 6 is 5 plus 1. Now here it was very easy to do. But the question is, if I'm clever, can I arrange 16 numbers so that there will not be either an increasing subsequence of length 4 or a decreasing subsequence of length 6. And we're going to see that the answer is no. And it has a very elementary explanation using the pigeonhole principle. And here's how you do it. Imagine that you have a sequence of t numbers, a1 up to at. They're all distinct. And, and it's a list. There's a, that's why I put parentheses around them and not squiggles. So there's a first one, a second one, a third one, a fourth one, up to a teeth one. All distinct real numbers. And so we're going to place them in, we're going to consider those numbers as pigeons. And then we're going to put them in pigeonholes. The pigeonholes are going to be associated with a pair of positive integers. So for each eye, place the pigeon AI in the pigeonhole associated with two numbers, ink, deek, ink, increasing, deek, decreasing, where ink is the length of the longest increasing subsequence starting with AI. So you've got to start AI, then go up to bigger, and then go to bigger, and then go to bigger. So there is some longest one. And you do deek in the same way, but you have to start with AI. So you have to go from AI, then go down, and then go down more and down more. So what's the longest one that you can get? And you call that deek. So that way, every AI gets two numbers associated with it, and that's a pigeonhole. All right, now, if there is no increasing subsequence of length m plus 1, that inc is always a number that's either 1, 2, up to m. And if there's no decreasing sequence of length n plus 1, then deek is always a number that's 1, 2, up to n. So how many pairs can you have inc, deek, where this is between 1 and m, and this is between 1 and n? Answer, m times n. That's the kind of counting problem we did in day one in this course. So I've got how many pigeons? mn plus 1. I've got how many pigeon holes? mn. The pigeonhole principle says two pigeons have to go into the same hole. So I have pigeon ai, and I have pigeon aj, and they both are placed into the same pigeonhole. Now let's understand what that means. But if this one is different from this one, it's either less than it or bigger than it. Imagine that it's less. This is the little one, and this is the big one. 
So you're going from here to here, you're increasing. Now, there's a, a certain sequence that starts here and goes on, and that's how you got the ink value for this number. So whatever the ink value for this number is, the ink value for this number is at least one bigger. They can't have the same ink value. They can't be in the same pigeonhole. And it's the same way if it's decreasing. If the first one is actually bigger than the second one, then you are starting a decreasing sequence when you go from the first one to the second one. So if this one has some decreasing sequence starting from here, going down and down and down and down, then when you add the first one to it, you get a decreasing sequence, which is at least one longer. So the deq number cannot be the same. And that's the proof. That's kind of cute, isn't it? The Erdős Sekerisim. And by the way, uh, the pronunciation, the, the, the double slashes on the O is a Hungarian double slash. And um, you try to say it Erdős. And if there are Hungarians here, you're probably cringing with my uh, pronunciation. But that's not, a, that's not like a German umlaut. So don't type it like this. That's bad alliteration. This is Erdős.